contradiction and how it pivots. So my argument in a nutshell is basically that how could this film be liberating? How is Warhol's approach to sexuality liberating when it so precisely mirrors the um, ethos of capitalism, right? And sort of sex is work, work is sex, it looks identical. How can that possibly be liberating? And then it pivots because it resembles production, capitalist production, and the kinds of alienated relations that are sustained through that. And yet it doesn't produce anything that's useful. And so all of the audience in the 60s who heard, you know, that Warhol's a making pornographic films, and they'd go to see the films, and they're like, where's the sex? For all the reasons we talked about, it's so difficult to watch that they're not making a useful product, that they're actually sort of defying the commoditization of sexuality that they seem to be participating in. And so all of these scenes of queer sex where people are trying to have sex, but it's not working, or just as it's getting good, the real ends are all, these are all instances of non-productivity. So I guess my example is that couch resembles work because everybody's doing their stuff on the factory, but it's like that classic, you know, it's like how we all work. You know, you're sitting at your desk, but you're just checking Facebook. It's like you look useful and you're not, and that's your way of defying it. And in the meantime, you're having fun by kind of perverting the use value of these things that you really look like you're mimicking and you're doing exactly. So there may be like an absence in the argument that is my fault, but I do think you understand. And I think that that contradiction Maybe you're not seeing how I'm getting there because I chop so much out of the talk, but when you described my argument back to me, I thought, yes, that's it. And then you said, and I don't understand. I thought, oh, God. Well, it made sense to me when you said it, so. And, um, I mean, they, oh, there's a question. Yeah, oh, yeah be okay. a follow-up on, on this Sorry, question. Yeah. Um, you hardly use the word acting, or you hardly were talking about actors there, we yeah. see. And I wonder if that, if that would be helpful to do. Um, you were mentioning in your first response that uh, the film is also about foreground and background. So the whole setting for me is very theoretical. Yeah? And if you say that, you can say uh, you were talking in the biker scene about the fact the guy doesn't pay attention to the woman. Now the, the, post, the positions and the postures of the woman are like playboy choreography. Mm -hmm. yeah? And clearly this is a commodified ob object. Mm -hmm. So why care about it? Why not work on the bike? More interesting, in the second bike scene, there's also getting your hands dirty, uh, lubrification, all this kind of stuff. This is real working on art. So uh, Try I don't know, do you want to, uh, to get into that direction or, at no, so all? Or uh, no? So explain to me how acting helps. Well, I the acting means the, the, the acting examples. means that you have to get rid of the the work sex opposition. This may not be so helpful, and it's far too direct because you always have an intermediate stage, right? You have the actors in front of the camera, even if they improvise. But and that's obvious for anybody who's also watching. Also, work and sex simultaneously. Right. Isn't acting? I mean, I use the term performance in the essay, right? Which I'm totally not going to hash out what I think the difference between acting and performance is right now. But I don't, I'm not following how acting undermines the work-sex opposition because, like couch acting, seems to be both work and sex. But later. Later I'll avoid you like the plague. So we don't have to <laughs> have that conversation, but thank you. Um, we should probably close, but if I can I just... Or maybe Urs has a question. I'll just ask one quick question. And then I want to give a one-minute intro to the screen test. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, I, well, I guess uh, I have two two questions. I, I'm not I'm not sure. Somehow the discussion took a track where we somehow have all or seem to have implicitly agreed it's difficult to watch the film, or is it difficult to watch sex, or is it? I I, I found it an incredible pleasure to watch the film, uh, and I'm I, I I'm sort of unclear about that about what it is that we're sort of emphasizing difficulty here, and I'm not quite clear on what's so difficult. But the second thing was a question, was a, a bigger thing, the Gesamtkunstwerk, if I understood you brought it up in relation to Annette Michelson talking about the factory mm -hmm. as a Gesamtkunstwerk. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I found that very 
interesting because then that's situating the the work pleasure acting performance on the couch um, whether or not a camera's there as um, art and that then when the camera is there it's then filming it and then that that's changing our whole understanding of these films that they are part of something else that the medium may be posing on a couch when there's no camera there right. the medium the sociality in the factory is indeed a medium has its own medium specificity that has to be put in relationship to these films are these films traces of something that has happened the films have double double existences in a sense as objects but also as as one way of capturing one one view onto the Gesamtkunstwerk that was taking place there so right. it's a it's kind of sort of what i got out of you is it almost challenging the medium specificity of these films as 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 films in a very productive way okay um i love the second part of your comment but you hate the first part no i <laughs> just have a very simple answer to that i think the first part's more simple so mm -hmm. i'll address the first part first I don't think that difficulty and pleasure are exclusive. I think the mm. pleasure comes through the difficulty, right? And that's why Warhol, notorious, but like many artists, is not to be believed, right? When he's speaking or writing, mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm, sense when he's saying, mm -hmm. oh, the best kind of sex is not thinking about it. Sex says who? You know, the best kind of sex is the difficult kind of sex that is either punctuated by distraction or triangulated by desire or rendered oblique in a million ways or complicated, right? Like, that's the kind of desire we all fall for. We don't fall for the easy kind. So that is just a front, I think, when he's saying that. That's why in the end I come back to it. Who's to say that the, you know, the sex you don't think about is the good kind and the menage a trois because no one's dancing in front of it is the most intimate reel? What if all the other reels that are possibly convoluted are the more pleasurable ones, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm problematizing that opposition between difficulty and pleasure. Second part of your comment, you said so beautifully that I I couldn't say it better, but it's, mm -hmm. this is why I sort of, I don't wanna like follow this too carefully because it'll just railroad us, but that's why I compared it to the Panopticon and Foucault it's not an exact metaphor, so I don't want to like debate whether it is or isn't, because that's just pointless, but it's the imagination of the camera, the imagination of the act of recording that transforms the factory into the Gesamtkunstwerk. That's, I think, mm. your point, whether or not the camera is actually recording. And so the camera is an instrument in that larger, more meaningful medium of sociality. And that's so beautiful how you said it. Mm. Like, no, I like how you said okay. it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just wanted to add one point uh, that was missing for me in our discussion a little bit, because your lecture is called Porn Realist. And when I saw the first scene, it was like the perfect image of a dream because he's lying there like an angel mm. and looking at at him on the on the couch it's flowers and, yeah and it's <laughs> really like heaven and i I just asked uh, me because you said so many things that were political of this film and very how he wanted to change reality in a way perhaps or, or not, the reality changed after seeing that movie but uh, how is the how would you see the conflict between dream and reality because he he, okay. he explicitly chooses this one for the first part of the movie okay you set me up perfectly thank you so one of the things that I'm arguing is that these oppositions that we think structure everyday life, you know, I said like work and leisure, black and white, public, private, that these oppositions are not in fact constitutive of what we think of reality, that reality embraces the contradiction of them both, right? And so reality includes performance, right? Like one of the things that pornography, mainstream pornography always claims, which is so unbelievable to all of us, is this rhetoric of authenticity. And Warhol rejects that. And I think that Warhol's films are the more realist because of it, because they don't 